Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a set review on set number 76161, the 1989 Batwing. Before I get into any more of this set, I would like to remind everybody who's watching there is a giveaway that I'm doing. The, the way I had to enter it will be in the link in the description below. Now then, let's get back to it. This set released in the year 2020 and retails for 200 US dollars contains 2,363 pieces and looks really great. I do love the design for it. I do like how it says 1989 Batwing on the top left corner and how it basically displays it uh, and how you have like the black here, then the light here, and then how it has the Batman logo there on the DC logo there. Now then let's get into the back. This is the back, it is showing it in like the, when it's landed over there, it showed you when it was like up and flying. Over here, it shows you that it can be mounted on a wall, what it, its uh, diameters are for its display, what it looks like straight, and what it looks like bent. And here are the three minifigures, you get Batman, Joker, and Larry, he is actually one of Joker's goons. You can actually see this much better on this side than the other, but like you can practically see me because this is like a reflective type box. It's nice that they do that. They don't, Lego doesn't really do that so much. So it's nice that they actually decide to do it for this box because I'm going to show you again. You can see my hand. This is the actual bat wing. It looks really great on display. I do love it. These, of course, are the three mini figures you get inside the set. And this is like the plaque. I'm surprised when I saw max speed of 14,000 miles an hour. That's insane. It's like, I think it's twice as fast as a plane. A little bit of extra detail about this set. Since you can see the bags, there are actually 13 bags in this set. Batman comes in bag one, Larry bag seven, and the Joker bag 13. So this is the first minifigure. It's the Joker minifigure. He does look pretty nice. He is holding some sort of quill or pen. He does have like a camera. You generally only see those in like Star Wars sets. I guess you could see them here. He does actually have be the only one with leg and toe printing, which is really nice, pretty detailed. He even got like in between the legs. You don't really see that too much. His torso looks pretty great. I am loving it. In the back, it basically just shows some creases. And then his face looks pretty nice with all the details. It of course is just white. And then he's got a pretty nice top hat. The next minifigure is this Batman minifigure. Uh, basically, he's just like any ordinary Batman minifigure except for his cowl. Because as you can see here, the cowl, the cape, and like the chest plate are an all-in-one piece, which basically makes this an exclusive character, this and the Batmobile. And when I do end up building and doing a set review on it, I will also be making a comparison between the two. This is the stand you get for the minifigures and what the three are. Now then, let's get into it going from right to left, starting out with the Joker. This is the final character in what some people consider to be like the best character. Uh, he is one of Joker's goons. His name is Larry. He's got a great mustache and a nice pair of sunglasses. He's actually the only one of the three characters to carry arm printing and on his right arm he's got the the uh, three J's to, for like Joker, which is pretty nice. And he does have like the Joker symbol on his shirt. And then I'm not really sure why, but he's got the dice over there. And I guess he also comes with a very nice boom box. I think it's the first one we've ever seen, which is nice. I do like it. It's like, you can even go to the inside and feel it. It does like, feel like the inside of an actual boom box. And so this is the stand that they're on. It's like on the corners, they in a sense put these type of stuff, I guess it's to resemble like the gargoyles or something. And then the stuff over here is to resemble like they're on some sort of ledge, which is really nice. If you wanna look at the uh, back, you can see the camera better and some of Larry's back printing. And I don't think the Batman actually has any back printing. Let's see. He does, even though the cape 100% blocks it out. I'm just gonna start out front over here. I do love how they have the mold that goes like this. It does look 
really nice. What I'm not really sure is, are these? Are these just some sort of cannons or whatnot? And if they are, why didn't they add them on the sticker plaque? Because as you see here, it says two side-mounted mini guns, which I'll show you, and four wing-mounted missile launchers, which are like, where they're really easy to see. Like just when you look at it, you see, because they're like totally different color than the whole set. Well, this is my question then. If they are weapons, why aren't they listed? If they aren't weapons, then why do they really look like there's some sort of cannon or something? This is something that only if you were building it or, you know, watching a set review on it, would you actually find out is if you can, you can actually push this and you see like a printed piece here. It's kind of like, I guess, a mini Easter egg for those building because those are like those tiny plate discs that you would shoot out. It's like a bonus piece. I think it's the only actual printed piece in the whole set, which is kind of crazy. And as you can see, it is on the other side also which is really nice. I'm not too sure why Lego decided to do it, but you know, thank you for it. You would think, oh, okay, fine. Now he's probably doing the cockpit. I am not that saving that for last. That is going to be my favorite part. So I do like saving the best for last. Over here is like the uh, wing flap. I guess it's what you need to use to turn. If you bring it up, it'll actually turn the whole thing. I believe that's what boats use, except by the middle. Like, it goes that way, and then the ship will turn that way. That's basically how they turn. Except my question is, why make this in a light gray? Why not make it in, like, a dark gray or just, like, black like the rest of the set? It kind of just, like, stands out. You can all see, like, the same thing over here. So this is, like, my question. Why do this? And then even, let's just say, when I pick it up, that's also gray under there, which is my question. The next thing I'm going to be showing you are the two mini guns. Because as you can see, just like I showed you before, it is listed over there with the two mini guns. They were, it's actually a really cool design. I like it a lot. And as you can see, they're basically the exact same thing. Because in the instructions, it does say times two. So that's kind of how you know it's going to be the exact same. Then over here, I think this is the most noticeable thing other than probably the cockpit and the actual ship are the missiles. Because as you can clearly see, they are not the exact same colors as the ship. They're red. That That is just insane. It just stands right on out. You can't actually play with them because they're, they're not like flick fire missiles. You could just basically take them off and that's about it. The next thing is this. It isn't, it's just more for a design like. You can move it up and down like this, but it's the only reason that you're able to do that is so that it can be on this angle and it does feel like, it does feel really nice when you go down like this, especially where they do it. They have like this one long slope, short, 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 and then they use a plate over there, which is nice. The next thing that I'm going to show you involves me removing the cockpit because the cockpit is actually a bit bigger than it's supposed to be. Like it would end here and this would all be closer up, but I guess Lego can do that. So they made it an extra size, which I'm not such a big fan of, but you know, they always have to do what they have to do to make this set work. The next thing I'm gonna show you is this thingy over here. You have to lift it up like this, and then it reveals the two crowbars you get in this set. Cause you can actually take the crowbars and when you go over here, you can remove this piece. I would have a hard time doing it because I don't want to or like like to. The, just you gotta take really my word on it that when you pick it up, you can open that up so you can actually nail it to a wall. And it does have like some sort of Batman sticker on it, which is nice. And then back here is basically just the tail end of the ship. Now then for my favorite part, the cockpit. So the cockpit consists of like this little thing here in the back with a fin on top, two trans gray pieces, like just half circles, and then like one, I'm not really sure what you can call that, trans gray color, and then this little cone piece and two plates at the end to cover it up. And it's easily removable like so, and it can easily fit in. Now then you just take it out, and now then let's get a closer look at all the fun stuff inside. So if you're at Batman's angle, this is what you'd be seeing. You'd have this thing. I believe this would control your elevation and this one would control your speed. I don't know. I don't really know. And this is a nice long detailed sticker piece. Really nice. And you have another sticker here, another there. And then that piece is also a sticker. Like I said, the only actual printed pieces were like those Batman stuff. I'm not really sure why Lego couldn't do more. But it is nice that they did. And then you've got another nice detailed sticker piece over here. And then I guess it's like the targeting computer for it. 
You can't actually sit Batman down because of that the fact that his cape is made of hard plastic and it's just done the way it is. He can't actually sit, stand, or even do really anything when the cockpit's open. Like, they, in a sense, made it that he can only be displayed on that minifigure stand. Like, they had zero intention of him even having the ability to sit in here. Now, the final part of the actual Batman that I'm going to show you is the chair. This is probably the most detailed Lego chair you'll ever see. It's like a dentist chair, because, you know, it leans you all the way back. You got a headrest, something like that. And it's just incredibly detailed. It's connected by Technic over there, and then it's connected by Technic over there for the actual head seat. It's really cool, and I just love it. This is the final thing I'm going to be showing you. It is the stand. Basically, it gets put in over here by one certain spot, and it's just held up by this. I think if you just, like, take this out and then you move it up, it can be displayed forwardly. And then you have the beautiful plaque that you have here, just giving you all the details, the max speed, cruise speed, length, height, wristband, engine, and weapons. The way how to get it on is when you take your bat wing, you got this piece here, you have to make sure that it perfectly lines up with that piece. And then as you can see, it clicks in just like that perfectly and on display. And that is all for today's set review of the 1989 Batwing. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys leave a like and subscribe.